Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being on the call this morning. Um, I just want to, I'm going to go ahead and hop right in. Um, So we know that this has been a rough week, just, you know, in America, in people's personal lives. And there's just been a lot of things that have been taking place. And um, just as things have, that have, just as things have been popping up, the Holy Spirit just really kept bringing up um, when Jesus was being born. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just start reading scripture, Matthew 2, 1 through 18. It says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem to saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star at its rising and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people and asked them where the Messiah would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report back to me so that I too can go and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way and there it was, the star they had seen at its rising. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, myrrh. and being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. After they were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and escaped to Egypt. He stayed there until Herod's death so that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled out of Egypt. I called my son. Then Herod, when he realized that he had been outwitted by the wise men, flew into a rage. He gave orders to massacre all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years and two years old and under. In keeping with the time he had learned from the wise men, then what was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she refused to be consoled because they are no more. Um, so I pulled that scripture because I recognized that with um, the recent shooting, you know, it was a horrible thing that took place. But one thing the Lord kept highlighting to me was that this is, this is not new. And as for us, as believers in Christ, there is a knowing that we receive because of the relationship we have with Christ. And he really just wanted to highlight the fact that, yes, there's a demonic assault on our children. I don't know if any, if you were on the call a couple of weeks ago, you know, Roe versus Wade has been a big thing. You know, abortions have been a huge topic. And a lot of times we in the body of Christ, we can get emotionally stirred and then draw, and then start thinking things that draws us away from Christ. The reality is is that the evil that takes place in this world is not of God. We still are dealing with battles of the enemy. And so 
when there are some Christians, you know, that fall into this space of no longer believing in God or no longer believing his word. But I want to encourage us to understand that God's word has spoken about so many things already. And even looking at what happened when Jesus came into the world, we can see that was extreme. It was it was extremely um, challenging. It, it's terrifying to think that a king would send out an order for male, for a group of kids to be killed. And so what we want to do is be mindful and conscious about the fact that the times that we're living in, it's just another version of what has happened before, which is why we have to stay in the word of God. And another thing the Holy Spirit had been pressing upon me was just praying against the spirit of arrogance and pride because it's being used as a distraction. And so he gave me the scriptures of Jeremiah 9, 23 through 24, where it says the wise person should not boast in his wisdom. The strong should not boast in his strength. The wealthy should not boast in his wealth, but the one who boasts should boast in this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord showing faithful love, justice, and righteousness on the earth, for I delight in these things. This is the Lord's declaration. He also gave me Matthew twenty three twelve, where it says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And so even here, we understand that it's very easy for us to fall into the space of thinking about what we do well and what not, thinking we do anything out of our own strength. But one thing that stands out is that God wants us to boast in knowing him. And so even with all the social media, even with all the things we want people want to post and say, this is a, a extremely pivotal time for us to boast in Christ, to tell the narrative of Christ, to speak the word of God, to show it and and humble ourselves. It's not about the message we want to send. It's about the message God needs us to send. And so another thing, if you uh, were on here earlier, the worship song was Turn Your Eyes on Jesus. And so there is a focus on Christ that we need to pray that is restored within the body of Christ. And it has to first take place in the body of Christ so that way we can actually go out and and cultivate the heart of Christ in the world. Because right now, us in the body of Christ, us being divided, that does not give us the authority and power that we need to function in this world. And so looking at Psalm 19:4, it says, May the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And then Psalm 119, 15 through 16 says, I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And so those are the declarations that I have for us because God's word is what we need written upon our heart. We need to live it out. We need to speak it. We need to declare it. We need to believe it. We need to share it. And we need to do it without fear. And for those who are hurting, because I know this is a extremely painful week. It's hard to see violence. It's hard to see um, an assault and oppression upon uh, what upon who God speaks as innocent. And so I just want to speak Psalm 34, 18 over those who are extremely crushed in spirit. It says the Lord is near the brokenhearted. He saves those crushed in spirit. And I need us to understand that despite the experiences that we're, we're having, despite what we're seeing in this world, Jesus Christ is here. He is alive. He has the Holy Spirit in us. So we are not forsaken. We are not alone. And there is power in our prayers. And so as we pray today, I want us to truly pray and believe and understand that God already knew the things that would happen. He has already planned to bring 
restoration. He's planned to to heal the broken hearts. He's planned to rectify the wrongs that have been done. But the thing is, it has to be done in his way, in his timing. And no, we will not always understand. This is not something to try to bring logic into everything, but this is an opportunity for us to understand that God is sovereign and he is the focus and we need to make what he needs us to do a priority. And so I'm going to be praying and then I'm also going to bring on someone else so that way they can pray over um, children specifically. So if you have any additional prayer requests, you can drop them in the chat. And uh, we're just going to believe the Holy Spirit is just going to just speak in regards to whatever prayer areas of prayer that you need covered. Um, The Holy Spirit is going to speak to that. So Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you so much for being our father. I thank you for being sovereign. I thank you for being just. I thank you for being loving, kind, merciful, gracious. Father God, I thank you that you are the great I am. Father God, you you hold all power and authority, Lord. I thank you that you are our creator, that you are our provider. You are our healer, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that we lack nothing because we are your children, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would search our hearts in this moment, Lord. Before we even get into asking for things, Lord, search our hearts and purify our hearts of things that are not like you, Lord. If there's any ounce of of pride, if there's any ounce of fear, if there's any ounce of doubt, Father God, I ask that you will uproot it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, and that you will fill our hearts with your love, with humility, Lord God, and with peace, Lord. Heavenly Father, give us the wisdom, Lord, to understand your word, your will, and your way. Help us to walk out your precepts, your word, the things that you have presented and allowed us to have as a form of guidance, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I just want us to repent, Lord, for anything that we have said, anything that we have done, any thought we've allowed to fester within our mind that does not align with you, Lord God. Father God, I speak against any form of division, Lord. I pray that we would be watchful and mindful. And Lord, help us to not be like Peter, Lord God, saying things that go against your will, Heavenly Father. Father God, help us to speak only what you need us to speak in this season. Father God, I thank you that you are giving us revelation in this season. I thank you that you have already presented us a resource to help us, Lord. I thank you that your word is the source and we need to implement that every single day of our life and every aspect of our life, Lord. Father God, I just lift up the the families of of the children and the, the educators who were murdered, Heavenly Father, in the school shooting, Lord. Father God, we lift up the family um the family of those who were shot in Buffalo, New York, Lord God. Father God, we just pray against all this violence. Lord, we know that these are the last days and that they will there will be challenges. There will be more violence, Heavenly Father. But Father, I pray that right now you begin to dispatch your angels, Lord, to go ahead and cancel the plots and the schemes of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Even now, Lord God, we rebuke every single thought of every single festering thought of isolation and depression that may be lying within the mind of individuals, causing them to to create a space for the enemy to come in and use them, Lord. Father God, I just thank you that you are hearing us, and I thank you that there is power in your prayer. And Father, I ask for forgiveness, Lord. I ask for forgiveness for all of those in the body of Christ who have tried to diminish the power of prayer, Lord God. Father God, we know that praying is the first response, Heavenly Father. We know that through prayer, you give instructions. You give us the the guidance we need to move forward, Lord. We know that through prayer, you even cancel things before we even have to lift a finger. So Lord, help us never to forsake the power of prayer, Lord. And Lord, I just pray against this division in the body of Christ because it is bringing confusion to those in the world, Lord. 
Heavenly Father, we have no space or time to be divided in this season, Lord. So, Lord, I pray that you would speak to those, Lord, who are who are speaking blasphemy, who are allowing their emotions to control them. Father, I just pray that you heal their hearts, heal their, heal their wounds, Lord, that they would humble themselves in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they would come back to you, Lord God, get back in your word and understand, Lord, that you have already spoken to us about the things and the times to come. And it, does, it is not pretty. It is not perfect. But that is where our faith in Christ kicks in because we have already won because of Jesus Christ. So, Lord God, help us to fix our eyes on you and to be mindful, Lord God, about keeping you in the forefront. Father God, I pray against distractions within churches, within parachurches, other ministries, Lord. Help us not to create an opportunity for the enemy to use us to divide the body of Christ because of our own will, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I I cancel every word curse that has been spoken. Father God, you have given us so much authority with our words, yet so many people speak such evil things. And Lord, we just cancel those words And we repent for speaking out of your will, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that you help us to to allow, allow ourselves to only speak your word. And that comes with meditating on your word. So Lord, create whatever space is necessary for us to get back into studying your word and communing with you, Heavenly Father. Whether it be in the morning, whether it be in the evening, during the day, Lord, you are a priority for us. So help us to be intentional, Heavenly Father, about communing with you. Father God, I want to lift up those in their jobs, Lord. Lord, there is something happening in this season where there are many people you are repositioning. And I know it is not by mistake, Lord, because we are utilized wherever we go, Lord. So, Father God, I just want to declare and decree that you are properly positioning your children in the marketplace, Lord, because you need us to be a vessel for you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I pray that you help us to understand that wherever we're positioned is bigger than us, Heavenly Father. It is in regards for us to be utilized to touch the lives of other people, to pour out your love so that they may come to the knowledge of you, Lord God. So, Heavenly Father, help us to not grow weary in the waiting. Help us to not become fearful. Help us to not allow our thoughts to wander to the worst case scenario. Instead, Lord, help us to speak in faith and to function in a spirit of gratitude, Lord. Help us to begin to praise you, Lord, and thank you in advance for the, for the, the newness, the changes, the blessings that are manifesting or coming to fruition in this season, Lord God. Heavenly Father, Lord, I also want to pray for those who feel like they're struggling with being in your presence. Father God, I pray that you help our minds understand that you never leave us. We are always with you, Lord, and you are always with us. So help us to understand that, Lord, it's not a matter of being able to, to get in your word in the exact same time, but it becomes a lifestyle that your spirit fills us and we flow in it and we walk in it and it becomes evident that we are not functioning out of our flesh. We are functioning through the Holy Spirit. So Father God, I just thank you that you are filling us up even now, Lord God, that you are renewing our mind, that you are transforming our heart, Lord God, that you are bringing us into alignment with you in our spirit, body, and soul, Lord God. And Father God, I just want to pray, Lord, that you would just bring, you will remove the spirit of fear and remind us, Lord, that you have given us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, Lord. That is what you have given us. So, Lord, we cancel every lie of our flesh, every lie of the enemy, Lord. And we just speak your word over ourselves, Heavenly Father. Even today, Lord God, I just pray that you help us to be very intentional about getting in your word and speaking to you, Lord. No matter what time of day it is, Lord, we need to make you a priority. Help us to not get distracted by the things of this world, but to speak, but to read about what you have already said is to come and you have shown us how to handle it, Lord. 
Father God, I think of Daniel, Lord God, and how he was in Babylon under a ruler who who killed who killed people who just disobeyed him. Father God, that level of evil still exists, Lord. But even then, you gave him wisdom. You gave him wisdom and how to function in that kingdom. And I ask that you give us members in the body of Christ a divine wisdom, a divine strategy, strategy, divine instructions on how you will use us and how we can stand firm in this season, Lord God. Because Heavenly Father, we recognize that, yes, the government, we will not depend on the government. We can't. The government was not created for us. But Lord God, we do know because of your sovereignty and your power and your authority, you can utilize us, Lord, to help shift things in the government. So, Father God, I thank you that your children, we have influence. We make an impact. And Lord, I just want to repent for all of the believers in Christ who have taken their influence for self for self glory, Lord. Father, I am sorry that any that we have gotten into this mindset of trying to promote ourselves when the when the goal is to share your gospel, to share who you are, to promote you, Heavenly Father. So, Father God, we repent for any form of self-glorification in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to humble us. We want you to humble us, Lord God, that we would stay in a heart posture that that does not take us away from you, Lord God. We want to stay close to you. We want to continue to embody your peace, your patience, your goodness, your kindness, your self-control, Lord God. All the fruit of the Spirit we want to embody in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So, Father God, I just thank you for for staying close to us. I thank you for, for forgiving us. I thank you for loving us. I thank you for giving us something to do for you, Lord. It is a privilege to be your child. It is a privilege to serve under you. And I thank you that you have filled us with so much authority and power. And I just pray that everybody on this call understands the power that God has given us to live on this earth and to speak his word and to actually see change come into fruition, Lord. Father God, I pray for not only spiritual healing, Lord God, but emotional, physical, financial, relational healing in every single area of our lives, Lord God. And Lord, for those who are struggling physically, Heavenly Father, I'm believing for miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord. I know personally you are a healer. You heal diseases, Lord God. You heal broken bones, Lord God. You heal us in ways that doctors say will tell people there is no op- there is no option. But Father God, you are a healer. So if anyone is, has sickness in their body, if them or even their family members have sickness, Father God, we cancel the sickness in the name of Jesus, Lord. And if that's and we ask, we bind the spirit of infirmity, Lord God, and we loose the spirit of healing, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, that if if the infirmity is rooted in an emotional hurt, Lord. We ask that you would heal their heart, Lord God. If they need to forgive someone, Lord, I pray that you help them to see that they need to forgive that person, Lord God. We renounce any form of unforgiveness, Lord. We renounce bitterness and resentment, Lord God. We renounce those things that have torn us apart from you, Heavenly Father. So, Father God, we just declare in the creed, Lord, that we are healed spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, relationally and financially lord there is no lack in our lives heavenly father you are giving us the power to obtain wealth lord you are giving us divine strategies to to go out and do things that will help build income lord not just for our selfish gain but things so that we can fund the things of the kingdom lord we know that in the as members of the body of christ it is not your will for us to 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 be poor it is not your will for us to not be able to to pour into those who are struggling financially lord so lord we are believing that you are going to help us bring multiple streams of income generate multiple streams of income lord that it will not just help us like personally lord but it will be utilized heavenly father to pour into the areas where finances has been an area for other people lord 
that we would be able to meet the needs of people all around this globe, Heavenly Father, and they would see the love of Christ and it would be a doorway for us to minister to them and bring them into your kingdom, Lord. So I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are changing our financial statuses right now in the name of Jesus. Once again, not for our personal gain, but so that we can fund the kingdom and the things that you desire for us to do, Heavenly Father. Father God, I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and allow Rachel to pray over the children. And so um, as Rachel prays, I want us to keep a same posture of prayer and just understanding that in this season, children are being attacked. And we want to make sure that we keep them in the forefront. So, Rachel, you can go ahead and pray. Let's see. Dear Heavenly Father, I stand in agreement with the prayer that's gone forth, God. And I just thank you for this time. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, God, for um, your air in our lungs, dear Heavenly Father, and just God, to be able to go out another day, Father God, for all of us on this uh, prayer call, Father, and, and anyone that'll go back and listen to it too, Father God, for with this day, Father God, we have another opportunity, Father, to just help advance your kingdom, Father God. We have another opportunity um, for healing, God, for restoration, God, for reconciliation, God, and just to go out to your people in love, Father. Um, I want to lift up the children of our world, the children of um, our nation, every nation, God, and I just plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, Father God. I ask, Father, that that you protect these children, Father, that you um, raise up villages around them, Father God, that will stand in the gap for them and intercede for them, Father God, that will mentor them, Father that will, um, that will uh, be God, uh, mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles to them, Father God, that will raise them up in which way they should know. So as they um, grow, they won't depart from you, Father God, that they will, they will learn at a young age, Father God, um, miracle signs and wonders and, and what those mean. And they'll yearn for that for them and for a relationship with you. They'll understand what it means to have a, have an intimate relationship with you, God, um, that they will that they will know the the gifts of the spirit God and and that um, your Holy Spirit will fill them Father God even at a young age God I um, I come against and I and I cancel attacks from the enemy Father God with these children Father God and I just speak life over them Father God that they will live and not die Father God that um, that they will not um, succumb to generational curses father god we just cancel and we, we break off generational curses from their bloodline father god um we come against uh gun violence father god against um against uh, uh pornography against addiction father god against um uh, uh, a life of crime father god we come against we come against crime father god and we just cancel that off of these children that um have been introduced to that whether it be by um, their communities, Father God, or their families, Father God. And Father, we just ask God that, um, that Father, that you just, that you be with them, that you protect them from harm, God, that, uh, that these children build each other up, Father God, that they love on each other, that they're around people that would love on them, God, and that would speak life into them and over them, God, that would prophesy over them, Father God, uh, we cancel and come against word curses against your children, Father God. And um, Father, we just we just ask that they be covered, God, that they be covered and they be protected, Father God. Um, that anyone that they would have wisdom and discernment um, at a young age, and so with their parents and their caretakers, Father God. Uh, that anyone that would seek to do harm or that would not care for the children, Father God. Um, that those attacks from the enemy be canceled, Father God, um, and that they be uh, just rendered null and void, Father. Um, I pray over, I pray over parents, Father, that um, are considering abortion, Father God. I just pray that they will come to know, Father God, that 
uh, each children, each child, Father God, that you knit in a mother's womb, God, that you have a purpose for that child. And um, not only is their death a sin, Father God, but it's a travesty, Father God, because these children just carry so much, Father God. They carry your your destiny, Father God. They carry your purpose, Father God. And so I just pray that um, anyone that that becomes pregnant and is and is concerned, Father, about um, about the health and the well being of themselves and their child, uh, even if there's a, a, a negative medical report, Father God, and if no matter what their situation, if they are thinking of not giving that uh, child life, Father God, uh, that they will have people to, to, to come into their life and, and to speak to them and just give them the knowledge and the wisdom, Father God, of what they are carrying, Father God, and that they will... Um, that they will fall to their knees, Father God, and that they will pray to you, Father God, that in all of these instances, Father God, that their faith will um, will will be will be magnified, Father God, and will grow, Father, that they will turn to you and that they will know that there is no situation, Father God, that you cannot get them through, but through you, Father God, um, we can do all things, Father, um, and that you strengthen us, God. And I pray the same for any families where children might be living in poverty or um, or being abused, Father God, for the children that are in foster care, Father God, or that are up for adoption right now or in group homes, Father God. I just pray that you are just, um, that you are, are calling unto your people, Father God, that you are calling unto your people and you are having them, um, Father God, have a heart for your children, that you are giving your people a heart for your children, Father God for foster care, for adoption, Father God, even if only for mentorship, Father God, in, in groups like Big Brother, Big Sister, Father God, so that your children, our future, Father God, um, will just have people, will have an abundance of people in their lives, Father God, to just show them um, a glimpse of what the Heavenly Father is because they will have um, kingdom role models in their life, Father God. And so um, I just I just ask these things in the name of Jesus, God, and I just, uh, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And so once again, we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the prayers that have been praised, Lord, and we seal them by the blood of Jesus. Lord God, we know that once again, we are your children, Lord. So because we are praying according to your word and your will, Heavenly Father, we will believe that it has now come into fruition and we cast out every vain imagination that may try to to rise above your word, Lord God, we bind every distraction, Lord God, and we send once again, we ask that you dispatch angels, Lord God, to begin to block the schemes and the plots of the enemy, Lord God. We pray against any backlash that may try to come against us, Lord God, and we thank you that there's a hedge of protection among every single one of us as we go about our day wherever we go, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that because of our union, because of our union with you, Heavenly Father, that that will extend not only for us, but also to our family members, those near us, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are continuously covering, watching, and guarding us, Heavenly Father. And we thank you that you are, once again, Lord, you are the great I am. You are sovereign. You are omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, Lord God. We will not question you, Heavenly Father, Lord God. We will believe and we will seek your face in all things, Heavenly Father, knowing, Lord, that you desire to cover us and love us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Amen.